wood. I think this is bait today. I'm just getting excited. It's gotta be what it is. Is that a fish? That feels like a fish to me. But he's not fighting at all. So what's... There he is. Yes, he is. He is fighting. He is fighting. Oh my gosh. Oh, 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 you are barely hooked, my friend. You are barely hooked. Look at you, buddy. Today, folks, we're going to talk about some of the secrets to winter fishing and what I think are a lot of common misconceptions that a lot of y'all may hold in your heads when it comes to catching winter bass just like this. My name's Tyler. Let's talk about it. Well, what's going on y'all and welcome back to TRF. I make it my goal here on this channel to help you guys become better bass anglers and catch more fish. And so if that describes you, someone who wants to advance in their bass fishing knowledge and skills, hit that gosh dang subscribe button to join the team. So winter time is finally here across the country and that means usually for most of us, tough bass fishing. But whether winter to you is, you know, 10 to 20 degrees outside every day or 40 to 60 degrees outside, depending on where you live, there are still ways to catch bass, albeit it might be harder, but there still are ways to catch them. But there's a lot of myths that I've heard over the years in, in even Bassmaster Magazine and especially here on social media about bass fishing and things you must always do to catch winter bass. And as you guys know on this channel, I hardly ever, you know, adhere to the always rules. Bass always always do this. Bait fish always do this. The water clarity always means X, Y, Z. I just personally don't subscribe to those rules of thought. So what are those myths? Let's talk about it. Starting with myth number one, and that is that winter bass always go deep. Now, of course, a lot of bass fishing is pretty relative because the lake that you are used to fishing is probably a lot different than the lake that I'm used to fishing and especially the lake that I'm on here today. But I try to go by the generalities in the, on this channel. Where are most of the bass gonna be during certain times of the year that give you guys the best chance at catching fish? And the statement that the fish always go deep in the winter time, that is just a lie, that's not true. Pardon the scene change there. My boat ended up being uh, bounced against some rocks and we do not want that, so we had to move to a separate location. But we were talking about myth number one. I swear, it's getting harder to film these videos. I, what? You know what, we're gonna push through the distractions to film this gosh dang video for you guys. And myth number one, as I said, is that the bass always go deep. And I used to believe that. You know, I read Bassmaster Magazine back in the day and watched a bunch of fishing YouTubers growing up. And I would think to myself, all right, winter's here, water temperature's dropping. There's not gonna be a single bass even close to the bank. They are all chasing bait fish out deep. They are just kind of sitting there all winter long. I can't catch any bass shallow. And that is just not the case. For the majority of, of lakes out there, I would say the water clarity being two to five feet, you know, max depth. Maybe you have a big reservoir like I'm on right now that has 100, 200 feet deep, but you know, maybe max depth 50 to 70 feet deep, maybe even shallower or 30 feet. The bass don't really have anything super deep to go to. And if they do go deep, they're usually suspending. And so the, the number that I have found to be deep for most lakes in the country, I'm talking about Texas where I'm from, Alabama, Florida for sure, all the way up to like, you know, Ohio, kind of right before the, the lakes start to freeze, uh, is about 20 feet. 20 feet is the number that I call deep for most lakes out there. Now, of course, you may be in a super clear body of water and those fish get down in 40, 50, 60 feet of water. I have heard of that and I have seen that. The lake that I grew up on, Lake Travis in Austin, Texas, had some really, really deep winter bass. But for the vast majority of fisheries out there, there are still fish near the bank. I'm not gonna say you can catch them throwing a whopper plopper in uh, January when the water temp is 48 and you catch them in a foot of water. That's probably not gonna happen. But there are still going to be some bass relatively close to the bank. They're not all gonna go super deep. So if you are a, a bank beater by nature, you like to fish shallow, don't give up in the winter time on fishing altogether because you still can catch fish shallow, especially on days when you have a lot of wind or you had a lot of cold cold weather, cold water, and then a, a day of hot sun, kind of you know later on into the late winter time, early spring, you're gonna find fish that kind of go from their deep, deeper water areas, get onto that cover, let's say rocks, docks that kind of absorb heat faster, and you can definitely catch some fish shallow during those conditions. Two important things to consider though, 
though, are that access to deep water is generally important. We'll talk about that later in some things to do on the water. And the second thing that's important is going to be bait fish. In the winter time, I have found that at least where I'm from, bass are bait fish dependent. They are chasing around schools of bait fish, and as those cold fronts start to come, it starts to kill off those bait fish. And so if you are around bait fish, you're probably at least in the vicinity of some bass. And in my experience, bait fish usually don't go deeper than about 20 feet. I'm, I'm not saying there's exceptions, there definitely are. But where I'm from, the overall, you know, majority of fish are going to be 20 foot or shallower. Myth number two that I hear a lot is that fish always group together, and that's not true. The only times that I've actually seen fish in the wintertime completely grouped together is underneath the ice in Minnesota. And of course, I'm not an ice fisherman, I live in Texas, and so that's not even applicable to this channel most of the time. And the only other time I've seen that is when fish are actively feeding on bait fish. And that only happens in the, the fall, earlier winter, before a lot of those bait fish die off and are eaten. And then of course, everybody kind of disperses. That late winter time period can be very, very frustrating because fish are not going to be gathered together. They're going to be in groups of, of one to three, maybe four, and oftentimes you can't catch multiple fish out of those groups. It is kind of like you catch the first one, bring them in the boat, the rest of them are either brought to the boat as you were fighting that fish, or they have dispersed. So the, the notion of every single bass in the lake is in these big groups together, unless they are actively feeding on fish, or the water is so cold that they are just down in a hole somewhere in the bottom of the lake, uh, they're not going to be gathered together. That is why covering water is so important on most lakes, even during the winter time, because you're not gonna be able to sit there most of the time in one place catching fish after fish after fish. You're gonna have to catch a fish here, a fish there, fish here, fish there. It's not until that pre-spawn, when those fish all start making the same pathways back to their spawning areas, that's where you're gonna find a lot of fish in the same locations. You're not gonna find that here in the winter. And the last myth is that the fish are always slow moving, and this is definitely not true. I have made videos in the past talking about the metabolism of bass slowing down. And to be honest, I'm not quite sure I phrased that right. Bass, of course, still have to eat. They have to feed in order to survive. And of course, their fins are always moving. Bass are always swimming around. So if I had said in the past that bass don't move in the winter, that's definitely not true. Now, when you have really, really cold days, you know, mega cold fronts coming in, dropping your water temperatures to the 40s, to the 30s, Bass, of course, are not going to move as fast. They just, they physically can't move as fast because their blood is flowing slower. But that doesn't mean there aren't times when they will chase moving baits. So our water temperature here in the lake today is really like 56 degrees, so not really that cold. But those bass, once it gets into the 40s, will start to slow down a little bit. But I even saw today a few fish as I was burning my Alabama rig past a brush pile or a rock, you know, vein off a big rock point. I would see fish that I didn't even know were there chase after my lure real quick and then kind of lose interest. So it's totally possible to catch fish on fast moving lures. You saw me start this video with a fast moving crankbait. I was doing a, a technique called speed cranking, casting it out there and basically burning a, a medium diving crankbait back in. You can catch fish all winter long doing that. Now, you're not gonna catch you know fish after fish after fish, fire up a school, that's usually a summertime type deal. But you can catch fish moving your lures fast. It is not always going to be a super slow moving lure winter. In my experience, only when you have super cold conditions for day after day after day, and then a high pressure, no cloud in the, in the, in the sky day, that's when you're gonna have fish that are not really wanting to chase anything, and that's when the drop shot is going to Excel, the drop shot, the Ned Rig, Jigging Spoon, that kind of thing. But most of the time in the winter, you can still get away with throwing a few moving baits. Maybe not as shallow, but you can still throw them relatively shallow just off the bank because there are still fish there. You just have to cover water in order to find them. So now that we've talked about some of the myths that I think people put too much faith in in the wintertime, I say we talk about three things that you should do in the winter to catch fish, whether you're a bass boat angler or a pond angler. And the first thing is that you should change your lures often. I don't mean like retie because your, your line is going to be frayed. I mean that bass in the wintertime can be temperamental. 
the weather is constantly changing, it's getting cold, and you have a few days of sun, then you have some cold, then you have wind, then you have a whole lot of days that are just dead calm. And so these bass are constantly changing. And of course, as the cold fronts start coming here in Texas and in the south, they are you know getting colder and colder. It is killing those bait fish. The fish go from having a ton of forage to chase to not a ton of forage to chase. And so in my experience, at least in Texas, the bass change a lot more in the winter than they do in the fall. But of course, the, the farther north you get uh, in the country, the more that's going to change. So my, my fall is going to be kind of you know, November through January. Y'all's fall was probably September through November. But bass, either way, are temperamental. You've got to be versatile and do not get stuck throwing the same lure all the time because even by the hour, bass are going to change. And so if you're catching them one day on a jerk bait, you can't expect to catch them the next day like you can in the springtime when a jerk bait, a lipless crankbait, flipping a Texas rig, that works almost every single day of the spring. In the winter, bass are changing a ton. The next thing you should do to increase your chances of catching fish this winter are going to be go to high percentage places. So that could be main lake points, big marina docks, uh, you know, giant, giant edges of grass flats. Those are high percentage places, especially when they are close to deep water. Like I said, bass are not going to be super deep, but they do want to be able to slide into that deeper water at certain times in the winter. And so main lake structure, points, docks, those kinds of things are great places to increase your odds at catching fish. I'm not saying there can't be bass on a secondary or, or tertiary point, maybe even the back of a creek. There could still be some bass in that 10 to 20 depth range in the back of a creek. But your odds of catching more fish are going to be fishing main lake points, uh, fishing the dam, fishing like really, really obvious stuff that those fish have access to deep water. That is going to be where the majority of your bass are in the winter. So put yourself in those positions. Now let's say you're at a lake that just, you can't get them going. You can't figure out what the bass are doing, you may have to drive this winter to lakes that are farther away from your house, ponds that are farther away, that maybe you've had better success out in the spring, you know there are tons of bass there, and so you're going to put yourself in a position to catch more fish because the place you're at has more fish. If you have the opportunities and the finances to be able to fish private bodies of water during the winter, you can call it cheating all you want, but I call it having fun and kind of passing the time for when those public bodies of water are incredibly tough. And the last tip that I have for you guys, as our good friend Mike Iconelli said is do not ever give up. I can tell you from experience, I've had some really rough days on the water in the winter, and especially this winter, for whatever reason, I just can't seem to get on any fish. But I know that it is always possible to run, especially in the winter time, to run into a giant bass. I've seen it time and time again, big fish bite in the winter. You might not catch as many fish, but the potential for a big bass to enter your kayak, bass boat, or on the bank is there. I'm telling you, I've seen it time and time again, big bass bite in the winter. And if you go out there several days in a row and continue to get skunked and you say, you know what, Tyler, I'm done with bass fishing until the springtime, there are still ways to become a better angler over the winter. And that kind of goes along with don't give up. Don't just put your rods away for the entire winter. Go out there and practice skipping. Go out there, practice a brand new lure that you've never tried before to get confidence with it so when spring and summertime rolls around, you can be ready to catch some fish on a brand new technique. Watch videos on how to read your fish finders and electronics. Go on the water and just practice graphing, trying to find what fish look like on sonar. Learn some connection knots between braid and fluorocarbon and learn how to do them quickly. That way when spring and summer come along, you can be an even more efficient angler. Well, goodness gracious, folks, that was a lot of dang information. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I say we hop back in the water and hopefully catch a few more fish. Like I said, it has been a tough winter, but my goal here on this channel is to help y'all become better bass anglers. Hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this content. And of course, I've got several other videos that kind of have to do with the winter time of the year, and I will leave those linked in the video description below. My name's Tyler, and we'll see y'all out on the water. There's one, there's one. What do I got? Hey, 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 oh, he got off. Gosh dang it. Little spotted bass on the Alabama rig. See, going to high percentage places can get you bites. We're only about 10 casts in on the dam here and I had a fish. I have a feeling this will not be the last bite we get here. Well, all you wonderful folks, I'd love to keep trying, but I have reached the point in my day when my brain is dead and 
it's time to go home. So we're gonna finish off this video with some more footage from a different winter day because obviously today was not too stellar. Maybe we'll even go to a pond for the rest of this video. Heck if I know, we'll see you there. So as I told you guys, when it's winter time and the fish just ain't biting for you at your usual spots, sometimes you gotta go places where you know there are more fish. And the bite at this course is usually not too hard to come by. And so we got two lures right now to finish out this video lipless crankbait and a jerk bait. I assume y'all can hear, but we have a little bit of wind today, and so the reaction bait is probably gonna be the way to go. I'm excited, let's catch some fish. Is that one? That's one, let's go, baby. First one, nab the lipless crankbait. Oh my gosh, it, that, is a, that is a big one. That's a, that's a big one. Holy smokes, I was not ready for that. Gosh, he's going this way now, he's going this way now. He's going this way now. See so y'all, who wants to fish on public bodies of water when you can just hit up a golf course? I'm just kidding, of course. I love public bodies of water. But there's something fun about going places the big ones are, at least you know they are. Oh, you are barely hooked, my friend. You are barely hooked. This will be my biggest bass of 2022 so far. Ha ah, ha ha! Look at you! Look at you, Mr. Five and a Half Pounder on the Red Eye Shad. Let's go, baby. I think that calls for selfie time. And just like classic winter time, the fish did not destroy it. It was like a very, very light bite, but that is a beautiful, beautiful fish. Now we're gonna get back in the water because she is cold, I bet. There you go. Good, oh, wrong way. There you go. You love to see it, baby. Let's catch another. Second cast in a row, baby. Two in a row, back-to-back -back casts. These fish are for sure grouped up together. And they are grouped up, oh gosh, dang it. Ah, oh, lost him. That's not what you want. You don't want to lose a big fish, or any fish for that matter, halfway back to the boat. Because he's gonna go back down there and potentially scare off the rest of the school. Ah, uh, let's get another cast in there. That was another three and a half, four pounder. But, like I said, he shook off, so they are not, you know, eating this thing hard. They're just nipping at it. Okay, so we either scared off the school, or, as I talked about on the main lake in this video, there wasn't that big of a school together. There was only two fish. That's totally a possibility. Let's keep going. There's one. Gosh, barely nipped at it. Where's my cast? I gotta make sure I know exactly where that cast was. It was right there, okay. I'm gonna get this guy in. He doesn't feel that big. Well, he's fighting kind of hard, but yeah, he's not bad, but he's not, not huge. Bring it up in here, yay! Two pounder! And when fish are hooked like this, we have two hooks right in the front, it's not a smart idea to lift them because they can easily shake the lure into your hand. So I like to do the old pressure points, which is right there and there. And the bass literally can't move. It's like you paralyze them if you do the pressure points. And from there, you can either grab the lip or just grab the hooks out like I am right here. And that is the best way in my experience to grab a trickily hooked bass. Beautiful, chunky winter bass. Thank you, buddy. Okay, let's see if maybe I can catch another one. He was right. Ah, kind of there-ish. Two, three, once again, that bite was just so stinking light. I felt him hit it twice. He went boom, boom. Well, boys and girls, that's gonna do it for the video today. I hope that you learned something and have become a better bass angler because of this video. Did we start this video as winter fishing myths? I think we did. Either way, we've been all over the place this video and this channel is gonna be all over the place until the springtime when those bass finally get predictable. But of course, I never want to make a video that doesn't include something to help you guys become a better angler. So if I failed in that, let me know in the comment section below and we'll see you guys right here on TRF.